Good evening, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Live Free and Ham. Uh, we're on our live stream. All right. Well, uh, I hope uh, as the chat kind of gets going here, uh, we'll uh, start to see a bunch more people jumping in there. Um, but uh, hopefully everybody's doing well tonight. And uh, to my, obviously, Ham Radio brothers, uh, Paul and Todd, how are you guys doing this evening? I'm doing good. Thanks. Yeah, I'm doing pretty good. Just finished the net and uh, just made it in time for the uh, live live stream. Yeah, your 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 nets—they've been punishing you a lot, especially. I know. Right now. I know. The limit there, huh? I'm gonna have to change <laughs> days with someone. I think if this keeps going on, uh, let's all go downhill from there. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> that'll <be a> bummer. <laughs> all right. Well, hey, we've got a special guest on tonight's show. Uh, I'd like to welcome Craig and uh, One SFT. Say hello, Craig. How you doing? Hi, Eric. Thanks for having me on. Looking forward to it. Cool. Awesome. Well, and uh, we're going to have a lot of fun tonight. Uh, yes, we are. <laughs> Yeah, all right, cool. Well, that's awesome. Um, before we kind of get into our conversation tonight, um, I wanted to kind of let you guys know about a bunch of different things going on. Um, you know, as uh, we've been alluding to in a couple of other previous episodes, uh, we've been building up the storefront there. Uh, we are uh, always uh, making new shirts and uh, new gear. And so, you know, without further ado, uh, we've got our classic hoodie out. I just got um, uh, one shipped from our printers just recently. Love it. Great quality. Awesome design on it. And uh, one of my favorites, which actually I'm wearing right now, is our Radio Wave shirt. So, you know, if you're a big Poto Life guy, you got to have the Radio Wave shirt. So head on over to our storefront there and check that uh, stuff out and let us know. Um, and, you know, last but not least, you know, as we always been alluding to and we keep making mention to about Paul, uh, you know, uh, making his uh, ham radio makes me feel dumb. Well, you know, now you can wear it in a shirt and wear it proudly. So, you know, head on uh, you know, like over there. Check that out. Let us know what you think. Um, and, you know, if you uh, you know don't know what that link is, we'll post that over there in the chat for everybody. Uh, and you can uh, feel free to you know, peruse that when you, you know, get a chance. Otherwise, um, you know, we'll be putting more stuff in that store and uh, looking forward to uh, that in the future. So, uh, as I said before, uh, thanks again, Craig, for coming on the show tonight. And you know, maybe for all the folks uh, in the chat, uh, you can kind of uh, give us a little bit more about yourself, Craig, and, uh, you know, kind of uh, share a little bit about your ham story there. And, and then we can kind of get into a, a little bit of uh, the shenanigans after. Sure. No problem. Let's see. Um I I got my technician tech ticket back in 1994 and uh, was fairly active with my HT throughout high school and uh, throughout UNH. Uh, got out of UNH, 
and uh, had to shelf it. So I took a hiatus from ham radio. Um, and uh, about 15 years later, I, I dusted it all off and I, I got back into it. 15 years is a lifetime with ham radio, of course. So a lot of things <laughs> yep. have changed. But um, I'm glad I kept my ticket active. And, um, and so I'm, I'm now a uh, an amateur extra and um, love operating out in the outside. Um, big field day operations, summer, winter field days. It's my, fa- it's my jam. Um, and let's see, I, professionally, I'm a, I'm a land surveyor and also an engineer, work for the Very family cool. company. And so and, 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 you've got a photo, right? Being outdoors all the time too. Yes. No. That's right. guy. <laughs> well, I, 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 I've never activated. I've nope. never activated officially a park. I've uh, oh, it's my, always been well, bigger, bigger than that. Yep. Uh, Todd, well, now you have a, a challenge. You've got to take Craig out. Craig took you out. So you, know, you got to do it in reverse now. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, Craig and I met, uh, just how I, how I met him is I was a new ham and I think we met on the repeater or we met somewhere on the radio and, uh, he invited me to go with a bunch of guys to, uh, what was that? Uh, what was that? It was park Portsmouth. Called? It was, um, new, uh, Newcastle. Was Newcastle. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. The fort there. Yep. Uh, so yeah, so we went, uh, so I went there and I didn't know what to expect. I was just kind of hanging around offering the help or whatever. And, uh, saw a guy throw up, uh, a wire <laughs> next thing you know he's talking to italy i'm like oh this is pretty cool yeah. so we were there all day and uh that's how uh we kind of met and uh, we've kept in touch through the radio and stuff and i knew that uh <clears throat> he had he had said uh how awesome <clears throat> it was that we were starting a uh podcast and live stream and youtube and stuff so i wanted to get him on and uh, we had an opportunity and i said hey why don't you come on and uh you know he's very big into uh the wolf pack which is a uh is a fusion um room and they also do a uh, a net and he also does the um and quote if i'm wrong craig just straight he also does a uh a net on sundays that uh goes over uh it's kind of like a tech info for uh system fusion so it's a pretty good net uh, i try to get on it when i can uh with baseball and stuff i i caught it this i caught it on the way into baseball practice and i sent him a text i said hey remind them that we're going to be on tonight <laughs> um, as baseball practice ended, the net was en- was just ending. So uh, I heard the very beginning, the very end. But uh, it's it's a really good net, and there's a lot of good guys on there uh, all around the country, really, that have, have checked in. And uh, if you've got questions about fusion or that's where to go. So uh, that's uh, so, us. So let's kind of dive into it. So I mean, obviously, Todd, you you, you, you grab the bull by the horns there. So you know. I, Craig, I mean, you kind of been, you know, you got your hands in a lot of different things, which is awesome. Um, you know, let's let's kind of start somewhere. So, you know, obviously you, you, you've got the Nefaro group. So talk a little bit about that. The what I like to call the anti club group. But, you know, it's a club yeah. anyway, sort of in a weird way. Yep. But talk a little bit about so, that and like, let us know. <laughs> sure. So so I'm 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 really proud of, of both these groups that I'm part of the, these teams. The first team is the Nefaro and that's that's double N E F A R O stands for Northern New England Field Amateur Radio Operators. We wanted something that sort of rolled off the tongue. Um, and we put together a, a small group of a band of outlaws that um, we all enjoy field day. And around beginning of COVID, the big clubs couldn't operate a normal field day operation. It was just too dangerous for the big clubs with health insur- health care issues and young people, old people. And so there was a handful of us who were middle to old who didn't care about the, <laughs> the health risks. And so we ended up putting together a small band of uh, folks who wanted to do field day. And in order to, to pull a, call, a club call sign, the FCC required you to have some paperwork. And so we put together just enough paperwork, bylaws and whatnot, with just a handful of our signatures, there, there were six of us, just enough to go and issue a, a club call sign. And so we pulled uh, anyone. Uh, actually, we started with KC1 MXF, which is a mouthful. And yeah. so we eventually uh, changed that over to any one FO, November Echo 1 Fox Oscar. And so we use that call sign when we're activating for cl- uh, field day summer, field day winter, um, Veterans Day, like Todd was talking about. We, we'll, we'll go all over the place. I want to make a shout out to uh, Pat W1YTT. Pat uh, Morrison has really taken the bull by the horns, and he has really taken and given leadership to New Faro. 
Um, he and I started it, and he's I've had to back off because of family and work. But uh, New Faro lives and strong. We activated Hudson, New Hampshire, Benson's Park for Winter Field Day this year. It was fantastic. Um, it's not a typical club. It's not a uh, general, you know, our, the point was not to make new hams and teach and do classes. The point was to activate for field day. Yeah. And sometimes you just want to go out with your buddies who are not brand new. No offense, Todd, but <laughs> you don't get my point. Um, and, and we get out of the truck, we roll up, we get out of the truck and very few words are spoken. We know exactly what needs to happen. And we meet just twice, three times a year. That's that's about it. That's the that's the thirty thousand foot uh, level for, on that one, Eric. So so it's primarily just like kind of a band of guys that you know under the guise of a club, you know, loose club fitted, you know, group that uh, you, you know your focus is primarily field day. So you guys, you know, are you a competitive group? Or are you just kind of like a, hey, we all get together and we're like happy if we make contacts, but we're enjoying hanging out and and uh, you know and uh, playing radio. I'd say we're half and half. Some of us are really competitive. Some of us really just want to have fun. Um, I, I think we've been we've been not the bottom of the barrel as far as placings go. We're certainly not winning these things, but we're not supposed to. It's not really a contest. Nope. Um, but we we go, we see what we did last year, and we want to make it better from last year. And so we're competing against ourselves. Right. You know, now, and then what do you guys usually run? Are you guys like a four or five or smaller than that? Or, you know, yeah, we're a five alpha. We're typically oh, nice. five alpha. And so the, the thing that we wanted to do first was to put together a triplexer. So we, we found a, a company that would make us a custom triplexer that would handle 20, 40, and 80. And then we pump that into a end fed. I think we're using an, a Palomar engineers end fed right now. Uh, and he handles 500 watts, and you need that big power handling when you're when you're running three stations into that NFED wire. Um, we do fantastic with that NFED. Um, we'll we'll launch, and we've tried everything. We've tried springs. We've tried the the stupid bag, you know, the arborist bags. But we we finally resolved ourselves into an air cannon, and so we'll launch oh, yeah. over a tree to haul this stuff up. Yep, air cannon will beat out anything uh, over, including a game of rock paper scissors. So yeah, <laughs> you're darn right. <laughs> so with the custom triplexer, you can you can all be receiving and transmitting at the same time, and nobody exactly. interferes. It's amazing. Some of the physics and behind going on is really amazing. Um, the distance from the center of the transmit antennas. When you're on in a field and you've got one operator on 40 on, on his antenna and you've got another operator on 20 on his antenna and they're 300 feet apart, 200 feet apart, there's a distance of 300 feet. And so the, the waves will eventually interfere. When you're on the same antenna, the distance is zero. Right. And so the the waves don't interfere. It's it's amazing. Um no. You said yeah. custom triplexer. So you, this commercial custom or this like yeah. someone built, hand built? So we carry it, it to it's commercial. I'm I am always interested in triplexers. I know we got one for our club, but I'm like always wanting to pick up a few more, and they're almost like on a these days. Yeah, we uh, I I forget the name of the company. He's he's sort of out of business right now, but it was not the the one you get from DX Engineering. Uh, uh, the give me a minute one. or two. It's the yeah. other guy out there. Um, I'll I'll come up with the name the name of yeah. the, if they're back Remember, in the business. Remember, we throw out the show links. But so yeah. so it, and this is a custom. It's a, so it's a triplexer. So you got three stations. How, you said you were running five. So are you you know running those other two stations like a VHF UHF or you know yeah. Okay, yeah. Cool, so. And so the other two will generally be ten or fifteen. Um, you know, or you know if if the guys want to if it's not a contest contest and they want to run 17 or 12 you can go 17 and 12 on a vertical big the big wolf river coil lovers and so yeah it's um 5 alpha is 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 enough 6 alpha is too much 4 alpha is just not enough and so um yeah we've we've tried the off center fed we love uh it's okay the end fed works the best um you generally only need two supports and I was telling Paul earlier, we like to roll up with a truck and a trailer. And so one of the supports will be mounted on the trailer. And so if you looked at my, um, my, I've got a small cargo trailer. 
And there's a there's a PVC mount that's been permanently attached to the trailer. So you just throw a mast right in this hole, and you can run the antenna up that the a fiberglass mast up 18, 20 feet, and then it launches you know towards the tree line for the rest of it, and you haul it up. Works really right. good. Yep. <laughs> Okay, so you, you 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 so your anti club is pretty much you know uh, what I'm finding at least in the YouTube verse and whatnot. There's a lot of similar things like uh, To's Toads group and the like that kind of fall in that same genre. And I think we're kind of pursuing our own little call sign, you know, uh, club call for uh, Liffery and Ham here too as well. But uh, you know, so do you guys um, find that uh, you know your your numbers are growing? You're just kind of like this small kind of band of brothers that kind of remain consistent and you know kind of what's that like ecosystem look like a little bit yeah the 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 group is definitely growing um pat and randall randall um kb1 uh k1 r uh rbt i think i I think i butchered his call sign but pat and randall these guys are are retired they're much more able to get out and, and operate they the two of them will run pota and We've got Nefaro hooked up through Poda as the club. So the club is doing Poda work. And I just haven't personally officially done the, what do you have to do? 10 activation, 10, 10 call cues to activate. I, I just haven't done it. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, the, the club is definitely growing. Um, and we've got folks from other clubs kind of swinging by and, and visiting and just to see how, what, a what, people who are enjoying it looks like (laughs) you know when you're when you have a a military setup with with, uh, some of the bigger clubs there's there's (laughs) top not a lot yeah that's right and so um we do we do it differently um it's just we'll we'll do some planning we'll do some pre-planning maybe a weekend before uh we're not planning six months in in advance i don't think we need to anymore We've got to the point where we know the equipment. We know the, the biggest thing is actually finding the permit. Mm-hmm. Now, I, I know I've seen, I, I think it was you guys. I don't know stinking permit. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, we, we got lucky. <laughs> we've been thrown out of pretty, some pretty nice places <laughs> because we didn't have a permit. Uh, for example, the, the White Mountain National Forest. What a beautiful place to run an auto station. Um, we were up and uh, the other the west the west side of the Kank, and um, that's Route 112. We got the antenna up in the air. We had stations running. We were tuned up, and the ranger, the armed ranger, showed up. He says, "Well, boys, where's your permit?" And this was wow. ten minutes before two p.m. Where it was oh. kickoff. Oh. So, lessons have been learned the hard way. Was um, that on was that on field day? Yeah. That was field day 2020. Oh. 2020. Oh. So, yep. were you able to pick at least the piss, the, pick up the pieces and just kind of move somewhere else, or did you just have to scrap the? We whole attempted. Thing? We attempted, but it, it was there was a lot of there was a lot of uh, heartache over that one. Um, no, but, isn't a park pass good enough? No, because the this particular ranger said he he was reading the rules and he said he got to the point where there he was in the section where if you are erecting an antenna you must have a permit what? and mm. yep and this wow. is the the intent of this rule we've looked into it since trust me the intent of that rule is well that's right the intent of it was for for uh, uh, forestry and loggers they'll set up and them they'll set themselves up a repeater station on gmrs or or, or land mobile and they'll they'll hoist a small tower up they'll guy it down and and it's keyed into the ground and it's self-supporting. That is commercial, and that needs a permit. The ranger wasn't able to make the dist- the distinction between commercial and ham radio. We should have done that for him by pulling the darn permit. Yeah. And so, yeah, that was- well, uh, I've had lesson learned. <laughs> yeah, I've had. Uh, you know, I've been. <clears throat> you know, when I was traveling, we had kids all over the country. And I was visiting them when I was down in Florida. I went into a park and uh, the ranger at the front desk said, uh, he says, oh, what are you doing? I said, I'm going to do some ham radio. I explained what parks on the air is. And he goes, you can't put anything in the trees. You know, you can't throw your antenna in the tree. And I said, well, I got a, you know, I got a a vertical mobile, you know, portable antenna. And he goes, oh, he goes, well, 
if you go over there, we even got electricity. So like I literally could have plugged in the radio. I'm like, no, I got batteries. I'm all good. But uh, I do know that that's, that's been one of the things. I mean, that's, that's why I, I pretty much use my, um, my vertical antenna, you know, and just set it up uh, anywhere because I do know that there has been some people said you can't, especially some of these parks, they don't want anything to ruin the trees or get stuck up there, say for saying you're leaving a, a wire hanging from the tree or whatever. So I totally understand that, but you'd think the ranger would have been a little bit more uh, understanding, especially you're up in the middle of the woods like that. Like it wasn't like you guys were, you know, erecting some huge tower or something. You're just throwing a wire in a tree. Yeah. Well, no, we actually were putting the mast up, and we guide the mast down. We we brought the uh, the the MFJ nineteen sixty five, right? And uh, so we we were. Putting, it's still temporary. It's not like you were. Yeah. You know, you're going to be up there for weeks on end. Put a bolster the trailer next year. <laughs> that's exactly yeah. right. The lesson learned, and so that's why you you have it mounted to the truck now. Yep. 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 <laughs> yeah. As long as you get it on tires, it's not technically you know grounded. Yeah, exactly cool. right. So. Yeah, yeah, so we've been having a lot of fun with that group, and um, it is all you have to do is is come and, and and join us one day. There's no dues. You come once, and you're a lifetime member. So Todd, <laughs> I didn't know if you're a member, but you are. A I know I'm a lifetime member. I'm an honorary lifetime member. I was at, the, I, was at I was at the first one. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> before it was even a before it was even official. No, yeah. I, I had a I I really had a good time. I mean, I didn't do much. I I didn't even make a contact because I was working on craig's computer and i couldn't get through and but i was like this is really cool and then eric took over and uh it was a field day and he forced me to get on the radio and i think my oh, first yeah you did my first contact was like to pennsylvania and i was so psyched and now i'm like pennsylvania like that's that's like nothing exactly <laughs> So, uh, yeah, so between the two of you, you know, you guys got me really into this. I, I got into ham radio just to be legal to fly my FPV uh, drones. Now I, I do more ham radio now, I think, than I do model airplanes. So <laughs> just the way it is, I guess. So you obviously, you know, so with Nafaro itself, it's obviously growing, which is awesome. It's good to see, you know, clubs thriving and people just, you know, um, finding places to fit because as i kind of you know told the line i'm like it doesn't matter our club you know the club down the street the big giant behemoth club you know across town whatever find a place you can plug in you know and you'll you'll, you'll find your people as they say and and uh yeah. you know like i said i i i i found my people between paul and, and todd and uh you know and, and many others ryan and they all, we all just stick together and we just love hanging out so you know that that definitely uh helps uh you know keep you cemented in, in, in whatever scenario whatever club you you like to be part of so yeah cool on that one yeah i I totally agree i think i think there's a lot of clubs out there there's a lot of reasons for having these different clubs and um you've you've got to try them all there's there's a fit for you for sure yep now you guys anti-digital modes or no gotta ask a question oh god no we we um we'll run fta we'll run uh psk no problem um a bunch of us have the ft991 alphas which are which are big radios but they're field. They've got the built-in sound, um, and they've got VHF and UHF too. So it's, I, I think the 911 Alpha is, is really a, a perfect radio for a weekend field day operation. I I, I would uh, include that as well as the its big brother, the DX10. I you know even though uh, yeah. Todd Todd has uh, you know shown that you can make contacts with less than uh, two watts in the finals left <laughs> after you fried them. That uh, you know, uh, I did. I did. I tell you that, Craig. Last field day, I'm like, how come no one's responded to me? And it was working, and I'm hearing everyone. I couldn't get out. I was like, this is like the worst field day because the year before I was like on fire, and uh, finally we switched radios and it worked. And I sent it to Yesu and like my finals went and yeah. So with like no finals, I, I made what like two or three contacts, I think. No, it was pretty I'm good. That caveat. Uh-huh. <laughs> I was gonna say I put the caveat on that. You know, you had a, a hex uh a hex beam yeah. hooked up yeah. to the thing. So <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. I mean it was so but that now that uh now that I've got the flex radio, the the DX ten is in a it's almost in a it's almost ready to go to be a, a go box. So we had the fabric, Ryan and I had the, we fabricated a, uh, a mount for it because no one makes a bracket for the DX10. They do yeah. the 710, they do the 991A, but nothing for the DX10. I couldn't find it on eBay. So uh, we went to, I got some metal and uh, we went over to 
W one E A A Mike. Uh, he's got a barn and like every tool known to man. If you need something done, he's probably got the tool for it. We used a plasma cutter, cut it out, and went back to Ryan's house, bent it up, and got it in actually into the go box. So my DX ten is mounted now. I'm just waiting for a few more parts that are back ordered, and uh, we should have that all up and running. And that's going to be my new local poda slash field day radio that I, i'll leave in the uh, back of the back of the yeah. jeep and i'm gonna pull into the parking lot i'll be using that um we used it on our row for a few of the parks and it worked pretty well todd you know we're gonna put a little teaser out there so th those that haven't given todd love head over to w1stj's uh, youtube channel because we're I trying to get one him, yet. <laughs> we're trying to get him to post stuff to it and so this is a perfect example of you know a a, a nice teaser to get you you know to, to to subscribe so head over there and then start uh you know spamming him with uh you know comments saying hey where's the where's your go box <laughs> hey i just got i just got my new little camera and let me tell you this thing is awesome this I is know. the dji what is it something three osmos three but it is quite the uh it's so tiny i mean look at that that's my, oh, hand. TV. <laughs> that's my that's my hand oops look how tiny AKA that thing is which equals i will lose it wow <laughs> so i am uh i am looking forward to uh starting some youtube videos i did test it out at zach's uh baseball scrimmage uh, it doesn't have very good zoom but uh i'm not going to need zoom when i'm filming uh ham radio stuff now am i so that will be coming up so yeah look for that in the near future once i figure out how to edit videos and do all that kind of stuff i'll get it up there be kind i'm just starting learning so it's going to be really amateur in the beginning but i figured in the next 10 years i'll be right up there with eric uh okay <laughs> <laughs> i would I, I i want you to surpass me you and paul <laughs> have you seen my videos <laughs> oh, <those are> awesome. <laughs> You know, if you, want to, you want to ever see the evil Knievel, uh, you know, motorbike, you know, head over to Paul's channel, KF4TPY, check out his son on his motorbike, uh, on motorbike, on his <laughs> on his dirt bike. Sorry, we're not uh, English here. Um, and, uh, <laughs> and many other antics, too, as well. All good stuff. Yeah, I can't, I can't discredit you. Dude, you put videos out. That's the best you can do, right? I'm the same here. <laughs> yeah, well, so the funny thing is, though, is it, I made I made that video out of three different clips, right? And so I sent the three clips to my wife and, and then, and then you called me and, or I called you, right. Uh, however that worked, uh, you know, cause we were, we were at the ATV park. And <clears throat> so the kids going around and, and meantime, I'm talking to Eric and my wife's panicked because she only saw the one of him eating shit and, <laughs> and she was like oh my god what's wrong with him is he okay why aren't you answering the phone <laughs> i was like oh, i was oh. on the phone with eric <laughs> it's more important than him bailing he's fine he just ate dirt <laughs> yeah well uh, i you know i gotta say craig when i when when we did that that first when you we you brought me along um that was kind of like I knew right then and there, like that mobile stuff that was really interesting to me. And, uh, and then Eric introduced me to POTA and, uh, I got my general and uh, we went to have lunch and then on the way home, he's like, let's go do a park. <laughs> and that was, that's all it took. And I've been, uh, pretty addicted to it. <laughs> it's like, I haven't, I haven't gone this month and I'm like having like, I'm like having withdrawals. I'm like, I gotta get out there and activate a park. So you but guys it, are been, animals. It's been you a lot of fun. Animals. <laughs> it's been a lot of fun and uh you know like i said i uh i really enjoy it and uh the mobile thing is where i where i, I love ham radio the best i just love getting out there in a park or in the woods or on the side of the road and popping up the antenna next thing you know i mean i was in louisiana i, I was in mississippi and i had a uh, all day to kill so i drove to louise louisiana like two and a half hours <laughs> to, to activate a park and i get there and i'm just sitting in this parking lot i'm in this black car and the sky comes over with this big pickup truck and now down south like pickup trucks have like six foot six foot lifts not like six yeah. inches like huge this guy's like dumping like all kinds of crap in this dumpster and he looks over <laughs> me and he comes up he goes you fbi i'm like no sir i'm not fbi I go, you feel you're not fbi i'm like i'm not fbi man i said i'm just doing ham radio <laughs> but here i am in this black car i got an antenna out there and i'm talking on the radio the guy's probably thinking i'm like getting him on a <laughs> on illegal dumping or something 
but uh <laughs> it, it, it's it's a lot of fun and you know and i've gone to places like i never would have gone to if uh if i wasn't doing this poda stuff like a lot of parks and stuff and areas like i never even visit so oh, we I, I, i'm about. really jealous you guys really make it you guys really do a great job um I'm jealous that you guys are able to operate that quickly, that fast, and that frequently. You know, um, that's something that I, I actually I could take a lesson on as far as getting the the packaged station ready to go in the trunk of the vehicle with a, a decent antenna, and knowing that you're going to be in a, in a compromised situation every time, basically. And, um, and so you guys have really sorted all that out, and I, I'm I got to give you props for that. Um, yeah. My, my, my poda gear it, with the antenna battery everything fits in a small backpack yeah and it's it's pretty awesome i can just throw that in the car and i'm ready to go and uh eric and i did a over i think it was november we did a rove up the coast so we started in mass went all the way up to maine what do we do seven parks i think eric we did yeah. seven parks and uh we were just like what you said no one had to talk we weren't even talking we would just get there i'd set up he'd set up take down and like we were in and out of parks like one after another we'd activate it go to the next one and uh we had it down by the end we were doing it pretty well <laughs> we were pretty much in in the zone i would say yeah so uh yeah. but uh it's a lot of fun well i mean yeah Craig, i know have it set up i mean you you mentioned your field day where you can literally just it's like almost like clockwork with a lot of your guys i mean that that same kind of philosophy and strategy is what us poto guys do but we just do it on a smaller scale right <laughs> and it's yeah. all practice Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah. Right, we practice. They, I totally agree. And one of my buddies, uh, John N One PTX, he and I have been. He he'd be the one that that I would go with Poda. Uh, John, he's a hiker, backpacker, soda guy, Poda guy, and um, he's been trying to do satellites now for a couple of years. And and every time that, that he he's ready to go and try to do a satellite, I would give him a shout and and we'd try to do it together. And uh, you know, it's it's practice, practice, practice. Certainly with satellites, and that's. Um, that's a different that's a different animal altogether i don't know if you guys have, have is, had a whole lot of experience with that is that did john recently change his call sign yeah yeah so yeah. he's the he, i know john kb1 eeu was his old call right yeah. yeah he was the one that he's the one who had the he threw the he's had a little mast on a he tied it to the fence and he ran the wire <laughs> down and he's sitting at the thing and he turns on the radio. Next thing you know, he's talking to Italy. And that was it. I was like, that's amazing. Like, are you kidding me? Yep. That was, John, it was him. Stories about uh, Craig. If you have a few, put them in the chat. <laughs> yeah. It's later. He's out there too. It looks like. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there he is. <laughs> that's cool. Yeah. It's, um, it's funny what, you know, it's a small, it's a small community ham radio, uh, certainly in Southern New Hampshire uh, or even just New Hampshire alone. It's a small state, and you're going to run into the same the same people uh, time and time again. So uh, be nice and uh, be be respectful because you're going to run into the same people all the time. It's not like we're a big state, so there's no place to hide. Um, but wow. yeah, it's um that's uh, that's Nefaro. I think uh, in a nutshell, uh, like I said, it's um I got a, another shout out to Pat W1YTT. If you um he's been handling the Facebook post. We've got a Facebook page uh, Nefaro. Um, I, I, I've been handling the, the website, which is nefaro.com. Um, but that's, it's kind of basic. It's just a Google site, whatever. Uh, it's, it's again, we're, we're not really out there, uh, looking for We're we're not doing public service. We're not trying to do fundraising. It's just, a we're doing the bare minimum enough to, to legally keep the FCC club call sign. I'm not going to lie. Yep. Yep. All good stuff. So. So uh, kind of uh, what, the, you know, we kind of alluded to just obviously in the, uh, you know, uh, thumbnail there. So, you know, you kind of dovetailed into obviously Nefaro and it sounds like it's definitely, uh, you know, a, a good, strong uh, group of guys and gals that are all part of that. And, and so, but your kind of passion's more, you know, I say in, you know, fusion area a little bit. So, you know, kind of talk a little bit around that and, you know, what, what led you to the digital side or the dark side sometimes and, and, you yeah. know, where, where they kind of uh, put you uh, today. Yeah, the um, the the fusion side is the the digital communications flavor, basically that was adopted by Yezu. Uh, it's a C four FM is the technical protocol, which it's C four FM is not a Yezu protocol. That's a, a legit protocol that's allowed in the FCC rules. 
Um, and so that's that's why you've got these hot spots out there, the YSF systems that are also using the same C4FM. So it's not C4FM isn't Yezu. Fusion is what the Yezu guys are, call, are doing. Um, it's the third. It's the third communications out there. First, we had D Star that was uh, initiated with the Japan uh, League, and then it was adopted, of course, by ICOM. Uh, the next one that was really kind of mainstream for ham radio was DMR, and and then and then Yezu showed up late to the party. Fusion didn't roll from from the Yezu group until 2013. And so by then, D Star was mature. It was it was well placed. People knew what it was, and the DMR stuff was also well understood by 2013 for, too. In fact, New Hampshire, I think, had, well, was part of the DMARC system. Had what up to 96 repeaters all connected at one point. Wow. Um, and so the the difference between those three few flavors of digital comms is. I think, and this is personal, personal opinion. I think the 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 Yezu f- approach was the most hammy, most amateur. It was the it's the I think it's the easiest to implement for an amateur operator. There is no um, there's no heavy duty Motorola style programming of a radio necessary. There's no heavy DMR um, talk group programming necessary for it. And it's literally take the radio out of the package. The first thing the radio does from from a, a factory reset is it, it boots up and asks for your call sign. That's all it needs. And so once you hit the button that says put me into deep digital transit mode, it then includes your call sign. And that's it. You're working. Um, it's different than the DMR group, the DMR, because the DMR came from a commercial yeah. world um and the dmr the d uh, yeah i think DMR. it's D, dmr mark it's literally has motorola in the word in the name okay so you've got to be a very keen operator when it comes to computing when it comes to code plugs this is not for the faint of heart i am a fairly technical person and i had a really hard time putting together a code plug with my first entry into the, into the DMR world, I tried for for six months to get DMR to work. Like, I, I and then I just quit. I sold it. Wait, I said I'm all set. You have a DMR repeater near you. Yeah, uh, 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 Bill Bill Barber. He's a great uh, NE1B. He's had me up to his house. We've looked at the repeater. He's he's member of the club that I, I used to be a part of. And yeah, the Hudson, New Hampshire has some really strong DMR stuff here. I still just, it just wasn't for me. No. So I, I, I decided to, and then at that point I had already chosen my Yezu and I was telling, I think Paul earlier tonight, I, I had settled on the Yezu ecosystem, not because it's the greatest radio of the world, but because the terminology between radio to radio to radio and the, and the menu driven structures were similar enough, whether it's a, a v, VHF mobile or the 891, the 991, they're all similar enough to me as a dumb engineer. So then, of course, Fusion showed up in in in, in, in the Yezu line. Um, and so I jumped into the, into the Fusion stuff head, uh, head first, um, tried to do the hotspot stuff. The hotspot, I finally realized that the hotspot stuff where you can buy those $100 units from Yamazon, that isn't real fusion. That's that's kind of the the other side of stuff. And so this will this once you start to get complicated with it, you can any engineer can make it more complicated. Oh yeah. And so You're good at that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I've um we decided um there was four of us at one point that decided that um there should be a a, a structured group of like minded hams around this this New England fusion thing. And so the idea was floated that we should put together a digital club. And and because it's digital, we don't need to have it based in Bill Ricca, or it doesn't need to be based in Hudson, or it, can't, it doesn't need to be based in Stoneham. It can be literally digital. And then, of course, it was the dead, dark times of COVID anyway, so no one was having physical meetings anyways. So a digital 
online club was was born. Um, the four of us originally, the, of the four that that chartered that first meeting, two of us are still on the club, and um, it's <clears throat> sorry, it it literally, I was literally laid up with a with a knee injury, and I was really on some good stuff at that point. And I said, "How hard could it be?" <laughs> the sure. um, so, yeah, that I, was I uh, my before that, so I should be okay. That's <laughs> right. <Everything> could... <laughs> that was March of that was February and March of twenty one, and we had then posted on the on the on the net because I was uh, one of the net control operators for the Friday night net here in New England, NFR. Um, the Wolfpack Network is. Well, it's no longer the only, but I think it's it was the first large-scale connected uh, digital network here in New England. Based in Stoneham, Mass., and it's hosted by Whiskey Oscar 1, Victor Echo Sierra. That's W-O-1-V-E-S, Brian out of Stoneham. And so he's he, he started all this back in 2013, 2014. Um, and at, at one point we had... Well, he had at that at, at that point before the club was in, in existence. Goffstown, New Hampshire was tied in. Uh, Pepperell, Massachusetts was tied in. Ossipee, New Hampshire was tied in. Uh, and a handful of backyard repeaters were tied in, like mine. I, I've got a small backyard repeater at my house, too. So at the time, I think we had eight. I think we're, net, we're up to 13 or so connected, all full-time networked uh, repeaters. Uh, like I said, the Wolfpack is no longer the only... Uh, fusion group here in New England, uh, UFB. They're another fusion group that ha also has a system of network repeaters. But the 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 question was asked: What happens if one of these node operators, and we're all just volunteers, and we're all just using our own money to to build these little connections? What if our house burns down? What if we lose our job? We can no longer fund the internet connection, or we blow up the little modem box that connects the computer to the radio. Who was around to help that node operator put this thing back on the air? And so the idea of a, a, a legitimate club, traditional club was born with the mission of to support those node operators when needed and to help expand the, the understanding of fusion. Like Todd was saying, we, we've got a great little tech net uh, on Sundays to do just that, to try to teach folks about fusion. And so that's why the club was started, to try to support it, uh, all the node operators. Now, there's a handful of clubs that actually own repeaters. Like, for, for example, the Lakes Region Repeater Association out of, um, I think they're up out of, officially I think he's out of Ossipee. But the, the LRRA, they have a repeater, uh, 442-100 in Ossipee, New Hampshire, tied into the Wolf Den. And the node that that feeds that is actually uh, N1EUN's node out of, um, and he's in New Durham, New Hampshire. Mm -hmm. And so it takes two to tango for the most part, because a lot of these locations do not have internet at the tower on the top of the mountain. And so what these what we generally have is the repeater up on the mountain, with power and then someone's home station their home qth is feeding the network to the repeater and so <clears throat> it's a it's a very unique way of running things because it's a cooperative thing there's no money being exchanged except for out of our own wallets to the po to power company um and so they really it became such a thing that people really enjoyed it and it really depended on it for fun and and, and enjoyment that the club was um, deemed a necessary thing. Now, do a lot of these repeaters in general, like are they all scattered in terms of either being in people's own homes or are they actually in commercial sites or are they a mix of both? Yeah, uh, the repeaters are a mix of both. Um, the the I'd say the, the most traditional repeater is the Goffstown repeater, um, and that is at the top of uh, South Mount Unkanunak, and it is uh, definitely in, in amongst a an array of other commercial antennas. So that's a, a traditional mountaintop repeater. Uh, Pepperell, uh, that's that's uh, on a very tall tower in Pepperell, and there's no mountains down there. But that's at uh, Harry's house. It's a it's a it's a legit tower, but it's not on a mountain. 
And then there's like Hudson, New Hampshire mine that just fills in around Hudson and Nashua. It gets out about 13, 14 miles, but uh, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a good mix of both. Is it the, uh... go ahead, Paul. All right. So uh, just out of curiosity. um, So each of the club members then has the fusion box and, and it's connected to a dedicated antenna. Not at all. The fusion box, the and I presume Paul, you're talking about the HRI 200. Yes. Okay. The the HRI 200 is the interface between the radio, a radio, and the computer. If you wanted to host a room or have direct connection into the system, and, and there's two ways where there's two ways where the the digital rooms connect. There's these HRI 200s need to have a static IP address. And so, for example, my repeater has an HRI 200. I have a nice static IP address. I've got fiber optic here at the house. I'm, I'm really lucky. And so my HRI 200 box is talking directly to Stoneham's box, W01VES. And so it's getting over the uh, direct IP from <clears throat> mothership to my box, and then it comes out my repeater direct no router involved the this is no longer necessary the that was intended for repeaters really only since about 2018 there is a new no new way of connecting called the pdn that stands for portable digital network sorry portable digital node and what that allows you to do with your ft2 or ft3 or ft5 those are your handhelds or the ftm 100 the ftm 400 and that's and the 200 now and the FTM 200. Those are the mobiles that are available. Not always in. They're not all in, in production. But these radios now have the ability <clears throat> to connect to your PC and connect through kind of a a router situation over in Japan. It quickly bounces out of Japan and comes back. And and Japan apps acts as a not a central server. But Japan acts as a central switch. Yeah, right. Yeah, the traffic is not, and the traffic is not running from New Hampshire to Japan and then back to the other node. It's not. It it does that just once, and once once the PDN knows the path to get from one node to the next, it can handle it quickly. So you no longer need the HRI two hundred if you just want to get on to the Wires X system. That and, and and that's it. Just requires the the PDN capable radio. Well, so all right. I, I guess maybe uh, I wasn't clear enough. Uh, so what I was really asking was like I have an I have a, a node. Uh, it's running Pi Star and and it's in DMR to Fusion crossover. And I have the the Wolf Den programmed in my DMR radio, and I can connect to a Fusion that way. But for the repeater aspect that all of your club members have, right, where you're you're actually sending the signal back and forth with with the actual repeaters, okay. do you guys all have to have that HRI? Or, or you need to have, <clears throat> you at least need to have. For me, I don't have that, but I have the Yesu digital radios that allow me to get on to Gosstown or any of the other repeaters just go into digital mode. Kind of like, I feel like our, our repeater on our, our club repeater has, it's a Yesu repeater and it has digital. Mm-hmm. The Gosstown one is connected to the Wolfpack. So I can get into the Wolfpack and everything that goes on there just by putting in the Gosstown repeater, digital, boom, I'm there mm-hmm. and I'm in like anyone else. And I'm just going with, I'm the only thing that I, I'm doing is I have to, rely on that that repeater is going to be up and running so sometimes like i've been on nets and some repeaters have died for some reason or they've lost contact or signals and you know sometimes it's happening that controls and they're they're switching to different repeaters or they're getting on their nodes or, or whatever they're doing but you technically don't need it all you need i mean i started on the 70d i think that well, was the first well i, I could hit the well, i could hit the <laughs> let me, let me, so, I hit the Gosson repeater, repeater with it. Repeater owner, come on. <laughs> okay, so Todd, you're not wrong. 
and 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 we all of us end user hams. You're absolutely correct, Todd. If you want to get into the system and and talk with everyone else, that's all you do need. But I think to to get back to Paul's question, if you want to host a node and provide a traffic path for everybody coming out of the repeater, full throttle, full time, 24 hours a day, yes, HRI 200 bucks, yes, please. Because you're gonna, you, you need that 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 good IP address, which is stable. The PDN is going to be going through your Wi-Fi laptop, which is garbage, in comparison. Yes, the HRI 200. If you're going to host a node, like for example, Bob N1 EUN, all right, he he hosts the node for the Ossipee New Hampshire repeater. He's 10 miles away, 15 miles away, and when the Wolfpack transmits over the network. It goes to his computer IP address. <clears throat> the HRI 200 then PTTs, hits the transmit on his radio. His radio then then bursts it off to the repeater, and then the repeater then spreads it out. Yeah. Okay, so right. you need that HRI 200 if you want to full fully provide traffic for everybody. Right. Um, yeah, for sure. Can you can you talk about? So there was a time, and this is when I was new, I, I actually talked to Carlos. Uh, he's the, I don't know if you know Carlos, but he jumps out of airplanes and tries to make contacts. Have you ever heard of him? Uh, oh, John, John <laughs> Pete Slater's been told me about him, yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's pretty. So I was I was just driving to work, and I, I was on the Gosstown repeater, but someone had changed it to America's Link, and mm. Carlos was on that, and I didn't realize because you know i was kind of new but i had a conversation with him a QSO with him we were talking and uh he uh you know and i knew him from youtube and stuff so i thought i was like oh wow i got this youtuber on and but then i found out that it was america's link because after we were done it then switched back to the wolf pack so um so that was another thing that i and then i, I learned that you can do that through your radio but that it's it set up that after you're done using it for so many minutes or something it automatically reverts back to the uh to the main, yeah. you know, whatever the original one was for. So, yeah, and Goffstown is exactly like that. Um, Paul, he he owns the repeater, and uh, the club actually uh, worked with Paul to get that back on the on the air. It was oh, down. Man. Okay, no, no, Paul. Uh, Not you, Paul. Uh, Paul <laughs> uh, his his call sign eludes me, but he is the the operator of the Goffstown repeater, and that machine went down uh, late uh, late fall last year and through the early winter. And the club put together a – actually, I'm sorry, it was late winter last year and early spring. The club put together a campaign to to fundraise and get that repeater put back on the air. And so Yezu has this great program, <laughs> Love that program where clubs can purchase the repeater. And here we are. Finally, we're doing our, our mission, right? A legit club is going to make the order for this repeater, put it back on the air, in cooperation with the the operator Paul up at, uh, uh, on top of Mount Unkanunak, it was it's it's just synergy. It's it's it just works, I, and we're really proud of how it works. Yeah. So, so yeah, the go ahead. So talk a little bit about. So you, obviously we've touched upon kind of the Wolves Network, and it's it's quite a vast you know set of repeaters, and so all of them in some form or fashion are all backhauled to each other. So when you're connected, say to the wolves or you're connected to a local repeater, you're transmitting across multiple States, multiple spans. What's that kind of geographic area look like in general? Yep. Right now, uh, the, the primary repeaters are in central New Hampshire, Southern New Hampshire. Uh, we have some repeaters in Maine that come on uh, for the nets only. And the, the main repeaters actually are uh, analog repeaters. And so that wow. gets to the, the concept of fusion in itself. The word fusion was chosen because it, at the time, remember 2013, we're trying to fuse the analog operators with the digital operators. And <laughs> some of the DR2 machines, well, actually back in the day, the DR1X machines um, would be running analog with a pat with an audio path and so when those repeaters when an analog operator would get on get on with their two meter repeater the two meter uh, mobile the repeater connected to the hr 200 injected the audio path transformed it into to ones and zeros and that fused the digital ops to the analog operators 
Maine right now is one of the only ones that I know that's left that's still analog. Uh, New Ham none of the New Hampshire repeaters, none of the Massachusetts repeaters. Gloucester is one of them. Pepperell, Stoneham. We're trying to put up, uh, we're trying to stand up one in Salem, New Hampshire as well. And we were actually thinking about going to the USS Salem and putting, and we were offered an, a spot on the USS Salem for the antenna. Wow. And because you don't need the, the internet there, you can beam the internet across the bay onto the repeater and then off the ship. And we've got some guys in the South Shore who can do just that. They can run oh, the node no for the club, their club members and beam it right across the bay uh, to the North Shore. And so that's one of the things we're thinking about. Um, yeah, it's very, very vast. Now, we, we mentioned very briefly the YSF. And, and Paul, your hotspot is using the YSF system. It's not Wires X. Wires X is the proprietary voice network that connects all these HRI 200s, all the PDNs, and there's a room number. For example, here, the Wolf Pack, the Wolf Den is room number 28941 on Wires X. Um, the YSF system is totally different. The way we connect the YSF system, which is using, you can use uh, uh, equipment that can get into the Brandmeister system, the DMR system, okay? Those hotspots are not Wires X. They're not, you don't, you didn't buy that from Yezu. It has nothing to do with Yezu. It just uses C4FM, which is what makes these things compatible with the Yezu radios. Those, Ye those YSF systems are bridged to the Wires X system. And the way we do that is literally with a tiny hotspot down in, in Stoneham, and it transmits directly over the air the 30 feet into the repeater. And there's a there's a RF bridge that bridges the YSF and the wires X. This is why when we have the Friday night nets, which is Friday night at 8 p.m. on wires X room number 28941 or YSF room uh, US dash wolf den. That's why when the bridge goes down or the wires X repeaters goes down, the folks on the YSF system can still talk to each other <laughs> and they can't, uh, they can't hear net control sometimes okay. because these are two different computer networks, two different Think of it as two different lands and the switch that goes between them just got severed briefly. And so that's one of the things that, that it's, it's a distinction, but it's an important one. So, so let's kind of shift gears here. So obviously Wolves Network, you guys have a couple of nets or at least a, a very strong net that I know kind of reaches beyond New England in general. And maybe you could talk a little about that and then kind of dovetail into your tech net, which I really kind of want to dive into the nuts and bolts on because I think it's really valuable for a lot of folks. And, and you've had yeah. some, you know, guest, you know, uh, royalty on it a couple of times too as well and, and uh, with uh, your tech net. So kind of talk a little about Wolves and, you know, how the span, you know, and, and, and sure. which of that goes and go from there. Sure. Yeah, let's start with the, the wolf net, the wolf pack network. That's um that is the uh, Friday night net. There's four or five of us on net control. I'm I'm just one of on the team, and Brian, he's one of the team uh, members. W one ves, W one tat. Uh, Chris is a net control operator. Jerry out in El Rosa, Minnesota, is one of our net control operators. KF zero AUV, which is gets to the point of digital being all everywhere. And so the the we have we have uh, check-ins. We have frequent check-ins from Washington State. We have check-ins from Michigan. We have check-ins from California that we can almost guarantee that they're going to be there every Friday night. Um, we've got a couple guys over in Japan, uh, Masa. He he checks in frequently from Japan, and of course it's eight a.m. for him. But it, it's it's a lot of fun. Um, the the reach is global. And that's not an exaggeration at all. It is it is global. Um, and when you have a good connection at yeah, where where you're at, maybe you're at the campground and you're you're using a YSF hotspot or through your cell phone tether. Sometimes that's a great connection. Sometimes it's pretty choppy. It can get pretty choppy sometimes. But um, you know, if you have the right guy in the hot seat running the net control, they can generally work through that. Yeah, and so you guys kind of with that net in general of like. I, 
because I started when I got back into the hobby, I started to kind of use that as a way to connect with my 300. And I found that was very, very valuable and, and a fun net because it was pretty small in the scale. But then, you know, somewhere along the line, you started having a couple of people, you know, from the West Coast showing up. And, and at that point, the net was getting really, really long. I mean, yeah. as yeah. we were commenting on Todd's, like 18 people, you were up like 35 people on the net. And you know, yeah. that, that's pretty huge from a net standpoint. <laughs> Uh, you know, at one point we had uh, one of the guys was was posting on Facebook. This is a year, uh, a couple of years ago now, probably four four years ago. One of the guys was posting our our schedule on a Wires X Nets page, and at one point we had over sixty one night, and we're like, "Geez, we can't do this anymore because <laughs> it went three <laughs> hours, and it was, it was coast to coast, and and we just nobody can no one could do it." The, the other part that that you have to run into is. The personality is on net control. If you're if you're a drag chewer, you're gonna want to talk to this check in person for more than 17 seconds. And you want to know where he's from and what he had for dinner. You can't do that if you've got 30 check-ins. And so it, it comes to time management sometimes. Um, some some most will tell me will tell me that I go too fast, but you know, I don't know. Yeah. And your it's, question of the day is more like, hey, do you like peanut butter or creamy or <laughs> peanut butter, you know? <laughs> That's <laughs> right. We, we, we had to stop the open-ended questions. You know, what's your favorite? Uh, <laughs> right. We had to uh, because of that. You're absolutely right. Yeah. Um, like last week, we had 30. We had 30 check-ins last week when I was running oh, that. And um, that, is, that is crazy. But that's that's an awesome problem to have. Like, I mean, obviously, yeah. you know, the HF nets are pretty huge in the, the vast expanse and stuff like that. But like to have something like digital and be able to still continue to maintain, you know, 20 to 30 check-ins on a, you know, given net time is uh, definitely, I applaud you guys. And I, I, I'm glad you guys stay the course, you know, because it is a, a trudge sometimes, you know, being net control. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, that, that's another thing, Eric, you, you've got to have, if you're having a net, you've got to have a good team together. You can, it's not fair to put it on one net control operator unless he's a real masochist, right? You, to have four or five in the in the rotation, that means you can almost go a month and a half between before you have to get back on. Wow. And that's so good. That's a breather. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it lets you breathe, it lets you go have fun with your wife or and the kids at the campground, whatever. Um, it allows you to have coverage when you can't do it when you're on the schedule. And um, getting getting chained and handcuffed to a net every week at the same time and you're the only person doing it that's a lot of work that's not cool and so and so the, that's why i'm really uh, really proud to be part of the team yeah we had a our club does a <clears throat> net every evening except when we have um well now monday first monday of the month i think there's an aries the aries uses it and then when we have club meetings obviously we don't do it but we had our one guy uh, k1xf john he did it every day yeah. every single day and i don't know he he had asked me if i wanted to do a day and then i started asking other people so now i think he only does he do it like two or three times a week yeah maybe three times a week but it's it, it's definitely gotten a he he's appreciated because it, it, it can it can be very it's a commitment and then you're doing it every day like i find it hard just to do it even once a week i mean we do our podcast recordings after the net and it's hard because sometimes if we have a guest on if the net's got 15 18 people versus five it, it makes a difference we're gonna have to have a conversation offline there paul uh, todd about that you know because it's really interfering with the podcast here <laughs> maybe maybe i can switch with uh tim or something no, no, don't well, change it we'll make it we'll change it. <laughs> let me switch gears real quick i know we're running out of time here i i I, for me, I try to keep a, my nets around an hour, and so I know folks have stuff to do, so I, don't, I, I feel bad going over an hour, but I really want to get to the, the oh. tech net. Mm -hmm. yeah, the, yeah, let's just kind of shift gears and focus into the tech net yeah. and talk a little bit about that, because that's that, I think, has really got a lot of value behind it, and you know, from that, it's obviously had a lot of you know, interest, in, and I, I've tuned into a couple of times, so yeah, talk about tech net. Go yeah. ahead. Tech net was one of the reasons, so once we had, we had stood up the club, and we had We've done all. We've done everything. We've we've got uh, the ta federal tax ID number. We've got a state. We, we're state registered. We've got actual finances and actual banks, brick and mortars. So we're a, a real legit club. We realized, well, we've got to do stuff. 
<laughs> so one of the activities was somebody says, you know, we're a ham radio club. Why don't we do ham radio? And so we decided. What a brilliant to do, idea. Yeah, right. Why not? <laughs> and so we decided to do a net. And we we didn't want to do just another rag rag net. There's plenty of those. There's nothing wrong with that. But we wanted to do something a little more geeky, a little more technical. And so the the concept of the tech net came up came about. And not only is it technically oriented, we also broke the mold when it comes when it comes to the format. You know, typically you've you've got a, a net control who's looking for check-ins. We we add it to the list, ding ding ding, linearly, and then we once we are done check-ins, we go back to number one. We ask the question and bang, 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 linearly, we go down through it, pass one, and then we do a pass two, and then we do a, a 73 round, right? If we're lucky. We didn't want we wanted to, to dispel of that. We wanted to get to the meat and potatoes of of a topic. And so we we decided to, to go with a round robin approach. And so we do a real super quick check-in. We will take check-ins quickly over the air or over the net logger. And we actually recommend folks to have net logger. And I'll get to that in a minute. But with the, with having the net logger on, on their computer screen or their iPhone, they know who's next in line. And so we ask, once we run through the quick checks, we ask them to do a quick introduction and then pass it off to the next station, next station, next station, next station. We do this lickety split super fast. We're not going to talk about what you're ate for dinner. We don't want to know what the weather is or the temperature or whether you had a once dog. Everyone, yeah. Once everyone's <laughs> in, in, we start in with the subject matter expert, the SME. And the subject matter expert is sometimes also in the net control, but not always. Sometimes we have, we've got a, like I said, even uh, on the tech net, we have another four or five different operators to, to for net control. Um, many of them are also Friday night nets, but not, we're all members of the club at that point. The subject matter expert then presents a topic and whether it's, how do you program your PDN? How do you register your PDN with, with wires X? What's SWR? How do you get an antenna on your car? Whether, you know, it's, we try to stick to fusion topics, but you run out of topics pretty quick. So we, then we will move over to VHF, UHF, and we'll start to talk about HF. There's a handful of guys like Jim, AC1MT. He's a huge POTA operator and one of our net controllers. He will often do a, with it, we'll, we'll do a talk on POTA. And the way this works, you start, you talk about the, your discussion. Think of this as like a, a seminar or a training for work. You've got an hour, lunch and learn. You've got an hour, so you, you don't want to mess around. He starts in on the topic. And he waits every three or four minutes. And then if someone has a question or a comment, they'll, they'll key up and they'll say, net comment. One of the cool things about Fusion is net control then sees their call sign come across the screen of the, of the radio. Bang. We know who that was. Okay. We'll add, we'll had, we'll, we'll stop the SMA. We'll ask for the comment and the SME will then process the comment. Either say, I don't know, or they'll, they'll go into it. And this goes on and on for about 15 to 20 minutes. And it's not lecture, but it's not just a linear rag chew either. The, the, the way we set it up originally was, not everybody wants to talk for three minutes. Some people just want to get on and say, my name is, and, and then, oh, my God, I don't want to talk anything. Some don't want to say anything at all. And so by having this round robin approach and, neck, and, and this whole net comment does the pause and then allows the net controls then to go after the net comment, it allows those folks who have comments that are germane to the conversation to get them in. And then you can have a back and forth. And this discord between the SME and, and the commenter is part of the lesson. Everyone learns from everything. And so the format of the of our tech nets is unique, I think, in that manner. And um, I think I think people get a lot out of it that way. Now, is your tech net a larger scale? Is it just mostly New England or you guys get on to, is it part of the Wires X platform? So somebody, you know, globally could be part of this. 
Yeah, it's it's global. It's um, we're running on on room two eight nine four one, and also the U.S. Wolf Den. So it's the exact same Wolf Pack network. Uh, <clears throat> so it's it's the exact same global reach that we have. Awesome. Oh, you had a question? Go. Uh, yeah, I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> I had a good one too. Oh man, <laughs> delay. All right. Well, cool. So so. So how long? So just kind of just some summary. So TechNet's been running for about how long for you guys since you started it from inception to today? Um, March twenty twenty one. March thirtieth, twenty twenty one is when we instituted the club. I think we had the TechNet uh, stood up by July of twenty twenty one. So it's about three years. Wow, and that that's that's awesome. That's a a great testament to be able to say going three years strong and still you know keep uh, plugging away at it and. You know, I, I, it's I, I've been on it a couple of times myself, just from my own personal side of things, and and I have to say I, I you know I enjoy just listening to it because uh, you know uh, it's one of those things that you know if you uh, you know want to uh, jump if you want to listen it's great, but if at the same time you want to jump in and be part of it, it's one of those things that you could easily uh, you know uh, fall into without too much effort. And so uh, you know I, I applaud you guys for doing something like that because it's definitely a much needed space and it's great for new people and people that have had a you know, a, a fusion radio for who knows how long and never ever press that button on their, you know, radio that says wires X, you know, <laughs> so. yeah. the, w- the club has a nice resource on uh, www.nef, nefg.us. So that's nefg.us is the club website. We have some resources on there. We have some FAQs on how to set up your radio. Uh, we have some, some uh, acts. We have access to some documents that we've de- developed access to other uh, youtubers that have been developed out there that are all uh, free use and so um and we all we've also been we used to have a nice newsletter we've we've had to get away from that because we just didn't have enough people um in the in the leadership the board which i think if you guys ever want me on ever again i don't know if you would but uh, I, I think that's a, a topic all of in itself and in, in, in uh, board dynamics on a club I will will definitely take you up on that offer because we did touch uh, one of our previous episodes on clubs and whatnot. But uh, I think we just really barely only talked about the the, the very high level surface of that. And, and you know, I'm sure there's definitely a need for something like that going forward. So yeah, we will we'll we'll, we'll, cool. we'll make sure we uh, ping you <laughs> when we get to that point. <laughs> cool. <laughs> hey, I remembered what I wanted to ask you. Um, well, too late. You're all done. No, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so. Um, good. Given given the uh, you know the 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 technical aspect of these nets, have you ever thought of recording them for posterity, so that you you could you know I don't know, throw them up on YouTube or put them up on a podcast, and then people could you know reference them later. We've thought about it for three years, and we've been trying different ways for three years. The trouble, Paul is getting both sides of the conversation into the system. Ah. And, and and we were we were we didn't have a, a the stream yard. This is this is new to me. I love it. I think it's the answer to my problem. But um <laughs> the if you were trying to do it with and we were just trying to do it with Zoom and Camtasia and of course YouTube getting both sides of the conversation out of that radio uh, into the the audio in path on the PC to record it. That was their trouble. Okay. Well, StreamYard will solve that, but also it's your your answer to the problem, but it's also your headache too. So just the, I'm sure. Of that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But you can do all the streaming. It's a, a challenge, and it's a, in and of its own. So we can't say it's all roses and unicorns on this end. <laughs> yeah. You know, not only the TechNet, to, to record the TechNet, um, we've also wanted to record nets. So I, I'm not a, I don't have a lot of public content on my personal web uh, YouTube. I, I, I have a ton of content, but I have to give you the link. I use it uh, in my, my teaching job as um, I, I'm, a, I'm an AutoCAD instructor as well. And so I use YouTube for AutoCAD and I have, I have what, 10 years, 16 weeks every, every year. I have thousands of hours of AutoCAD instruction on the, on the YouTube uh, personally. Um, and 
And I didn't, I didn't, I haven't made it all public because I tried it. I thought I could make money from it, but <laughs> so whatever. <laughs> the the problem with um the, that I've found with the YouTube, and I wanted to do some training on uh, nets. I have one or I have a couple uh, net YouTubes out there on my personal page, and it, and it, it works okay because it's mostly screen share. But again, getting to the point where the YouTube video was capturing the incoming radio audio from over the air and also the operator, me, that was beyond me. I, I've, I've tried everything. I've tried voice meter. I've tried uh, soft uh, mixers on the PC. I've tried hard mi hardware mixers. Um, and it always, I always end up getting YouTube, uh, sorry, uh, ground loops and it's just garbage audio. So I'm, I've been struggling with on that a little, a little bit. We'd be happy to help you. Paul is a genius when it comes to that stuff. He's straightened me out three or four times. And I, you know, I've been in sound probably 10 years. So yeah, I get, <laughs> I get it. And we'll talk offline about that for sure to help you out. We'd love to, you know, get some of that captured cool. and uh, help you out along the way. Cool. Cool. All right. Well, so let's kind of put a bow on this. So, you know, wh what uh, one or two things you'd kind of want to throw at people just to, you know, encourage them either to, you know, participate in, the, you know, if they're in the New England area, maybe in Nefaro or, you know, if you're, um, you know, interested in fusion or that side of things, you know, uh, you know, w w where would you like to point them in terms of, uh, you know, whether the Wolves, you know, uh, net is better or the tech net or both or, you know, you, you tell me <laughs> what last thing. <laughs> I, I think it's a good, great question. I think the the best thing to do would be to just listen to the Wolfpack Network uh, when you have a minute, and, and tr try to tune in on Friday nights, and just try to tune in on Sunday nights, Sunday afternoons. It's at three p.m. on Sunday, where the tech net, and um, just just participate. That's that's the best thing we can say. Just participate. My name is. I've been a fusion operator for zero days or a hundred days. Um, you know, I, we, some of the, some of the greatest ones we've got are, um, we've got some 80 year olds who have been hams for 60 years and they're, they're active with our group. And then of course you have the brand new guys who, who walk out of the candy store with a brand new FT3 or FT5 now. And, um, the guys down there will, will tune it up to the Goffstown repeater just to show them how it goes. And it takes all types. And, um, we we lo we love working with everybody on that stuff because it's it's fun and 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 it's easy the the fusion the the wires x is easy way easier than <laughs> programming a code plug by any stretch of the imagination <laughs> all right cool well i appreciate you coming on craig it was definitely um an education and understanding um obviously the Wolves Network and, you know, the TechNet and all the things you do uh, with your anti-group, which I, I'm, you know, going to have to become a member because, uh, you know, heck, I, I love doing the field day myself. Um, but, you know, as always, uh, it's a pleasure. Um, and so, you know, if uh, people wanted to reach out to you to either talk to you about Nafaro or any of the Fusion stuff or whatever, what's the best way to get a hold of you? Honestly, it's my call sign at net. That's the best way to get to me. Cool. All right. Well, as always, we uh, want to thank everybody in the stream. We had uh, 24 listeners tonight, and we appreciate all you guys for uh, you know being part of uh, tonight's live stream. Um, and as always, you know, if you haven't uh, liked or subscribed to Live Free and Ham, and I'm gonna just have to say to you, you know, you know, ain't nobody got time for that. Exactly. So you know, I ain't got time for that. And uh, you know, for what it's worth. Um, bring myself back into the mix here. <laughs> um, go? That's, that's really all I got to say, you know, and I get time for that. But anyway, so uh, as always, thank you guys for listening and watching. And uh, just one last thing is tomorrow is our regular weekly, bi-weekly drop. And that one is uh, uh, going to be a fun one. That's got uh, Mark uh, Halibut, uh, from Halibut Electronics talking about OHIS. So if you're into contesting consoles and the open headset standard, uh, you're going to want to make sure you uh, listen to that. So run over to our uh, website at livefreeandham.com and make sure you subscribe to the podcast. And as always, you know, make sure you check out all the links uh, that we'll have in our show notes tonight uh, for uh, this show. And, and 24 hours later, this will actually be recorded to our podcast as well, just in case you missed it. So with that, uh, thank you guys for uh, being part of this. And Craig, again, thank you for coming on. Thanks for and having me. This, this is a hoot. I really appreciate it. 
Sounds good. And we will definitely take you up on the, the future uh, talks about uh, club, uh, you know, nuts and bolts. And with that, uh, I'd like to say 7-3. Seven, 7-3, three. Seven, three. Seven, three. guys. Seven, three.